But you know what's funny? I remember when I first got here, I was visiting, and the lady was like grilling me at the the border, and she's like, she goes, "You need." I I I had worked I worked with a company in California, a huge company that had offices here. Yeah. And I was like, I I'm just coming to visit. She goes, "Well, how do I know you're not gonna stay here?" Because I, I don't want to. Like, <laughs> I was like, I just, I had, a, I had a, a quote unquote my wife now, but I had a girlfriend here and I came to visit her. And she's like, well, a lot of people come to this country and then they never leave. And I'm like, yeah, but then you could just kick me out at any time. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm just here to visit. And she goes, and you need to file the proper documents, blah, blah, blah. She went over all the documents and then she went, and $200 Canadian. Like, really aggressively, like, stare. And I was like, okay, so, like, a hundred bucks U.S.? Like, <laughs> I was like... She <laughs> might be the opposite of any Canadian <laughs> I've like, ever heard of in my... What the fuck? I was like, why are you so aggressive with me right now? <laughs> I think you got the one. I got the one, no, yeah. No, the one. The one. I've never heard that before. <laughs> what, was your, what was your first trip to Canada? First time you came to Canada? First time... Was it that trip? Uh, no, that was like the, I think it was like the third time, second or third time. Tell me about the, well, well, like the first time, when did you come here? The, the first, first time, time I came here, so I was still like back and forth between tile setting and doing head hunting. Okay. And I worked for this company called Robert Havs, huge company. And I was like, I, I was happy working for a company. So I came here and I'm like, yeah, they have offices in Toronto, like pretty cool, like whatever. But when the first time I came here, my wife took me all around, she took me to Niagara Falls, I'd never been. And you have to understand, I had never been east of, like, Utah. So I don't, like, for me, Mississippi was the east coast. So, like, <laughs> to come all the way here, I thought, like, yeah, I'm, like, on the coast. And she's like, it's not the east coast. I was like, no, this is the east coast. And I remember the excitement of how fast-paced everything was. It was, like, just nonstop. Like, there was a unicycle tied up front outside of, the Starbucks and then two blocks over there's the like businessmen like accounting professionals financials like gurus and it was like New York and San Francisco combined you've mentioned this pace thing before mm -hmm. so most people here would be like Toronto versus LA or like anywhere in California they'd want to take the Cali trip in a second mm -hmm. they would quote trade places in a second mm-hmm so for a lot of people, they can't understand where you're coming from and what you saw here. Because we are obsessed with what, uh, you know, where you're from. Mm -hmm. The beaches, mountains, it's nice. Why would someone from there like it? We, maybe we take for granted how good it is here. But maybe, maybe give us some insight on that. You know, from, from like the flip side, like what was it about here? Like this, this pace that you're talking about. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because... I have this conversation almost daily with people and I'm happy to have it. Like I, I enjoy the, the kind of the dialogue of that because a lot of people will tell me they love visiting Florida. They love visiting California. They love visiting places, but there's always a time limit. You know, when you go to Vegas, there's like a three day time limit. Like if anything past three days and you're like, okay, I'm sick of this. Like the oxygen pumped casinos, the cigarettes everywhere, the alcohol in the streets, the people falling all over them. So, like, it, it gets old. Now, I lived in Vegas for five years. So, for me, it was, like, it wasn't a problem, but I also wasn't, like, downtown every single night. So, it's always I try to find wherever I've been, and I've lived in, in a lot of different places, um, most of which have been, like, on, on the western seaboard. But I lived in Vegas. I lived in Reno. I lived in... Um, I lived down south in California. I lived in, in central California. And then I lived in Buffalo. And then now I lived in, in Toronto. And each one of those places has its unique benefits. And I think if you're the type of person that gravitates towards those benefits, um, then you'll do well. But Toronto specifically has some amazing benefits. One of them is the opportunity here. There is so much opportunity to succeed whatever you want to do. I mean, it just, it's incredible the amount of energy that people have to progression, to growth. So and where, where, where is the lack of that in California? If it, so the lack of opportunity. When you, when California you the is, um, is very much a place of like being grandfathered in. 
like when I think of of people like a good old boys club, I re- like it. I always think of my hometown, like Monterey. Like you can, there's a couple of, of, of egg breakers. There's some people that go in and they kind of pave the way and they, you know, they, they make, you know, new things for themselves or whatever. But when I was young, it was like you either fished, made wine or went into construction. Like that was pretty much your three, you know, ideals of success in that town. It's a very small town. So it was like 30,000 people at the time. So it's it's just it wasn't like you could move to two towns over and find something much different either you know it, a lot of people move to san francisco and there's a reason it's the homeless capital of the world they move to san francisco because they're gonna be an artist or do something whatever, and they end up homeless same thing with la they go there they want to be an actor and then anybody but other than turtle from fucking entourage it doesn't happen in 15 minutes you remember that story that's right he's like 15 minutes there he was a day there or whatever and he's eating lunch and he gets picked up for entourage Unbelievable. What the f- That's like... <laughs> speaking of the one, that was the one example. Yeah, that, that, that was happened. the one example. But not every story is like that. So when you go to California, it's like, you know, these big pipe dreams of becoming something amazing and unattainable and you're going to become a Kardashian tomorrow. It's not going to happen in, in most cases. And not to shoot everybody's dream down. Follow your dreams and, and all that, but have a plan. And the bottom line is somewhere like Toronto, somewhere like this city, they have so much opportunity for that to be a successful thing no matter what even acting well living versus visiting is the the real key Mm -hmm. you're right you you could visit anywhere and enjoy it but to live there is different and you know when you get to live at a you know in a place like toronto you get to enjoy a place like california Mm -hmm. as a a visit absolutely so guess what a week two weeks there it's glorious Mm -hmm. and then living there (laughs) it's funny would you rather yeah live here and enjoy the visit version of California or live in California and visit here. So here's the thing. Here's the way I look at it. I am a Cali boy to like to the soul, but I love and I fantasize about the idea of California. The idea gotcha. of going to the beach at three o'clock, chilling, relaxing. But the bottom line is when I was there, I was bored a lot. And even on vacation, I go with my, my wife and we went some, with some friends one time and everybody's like relaxing on the beach. And I'm like, you guys want to play volleyball? You guys want to play basketball? You guys want to go do this? You guys want? I was like, I can't sit still. And so if you're that type of personality living in a place like that, especially you can't go backwards, right? Like Steve Harvey has a, a famous story. He tells like, if you want to be successful, go fly first flight, go fly first class. And then try to go back and fly not first class next time and yeah. see how you feel about it. And I think once you've existed in a place like Toronto, it's yeah. so hard to go back. You're not moving to Muncie, Indiana. Like, you're not, it's not going to happen. For the record, I'm like you on a vacation. <laughs> like, my wife, she calls herself a parker. She likes to park and not leave. Mm-hmm. And I'm always like, what's up? <laughs> so she's like, where are you going now? I'm like, oh, there's a, there's a ping pong tournament <laughs> near the buffet. She's like, what? And it's like kids. And then she's like, well, well, like now we think, oh, this guy's showing me his paintings. He's doing this thing on the beach. I, I, I can't, I can't sit it's still. Like six a.m. Like, you're like, bep, bep, bep. Did you see the itinerary I typed up? I like mapping the day. Yeah, I don't like just sitting there. No, no, I get bored like you. Yeah. It's, you know, it's funny you say that. So, okay, so speaking of living versus visiting, you've done that here. Mm-hmm. You were a visitor. You've come in, but now you are. Yeah, you and live it, here. Well, tell me more about your intentions when you came here. Yeah, it was weird because, and then there's where you, you, like you said, like you find the caveats of, of a place. So you come here, you fantasize, oh my gosh, it's fast paced. There's a financial district that's booming. Like I'm going to work for this headhunting company here. That's, that was what was going to happen. And I said, uh, you know, I got here and everybody who I talked to, they're like, dude, if you can do tile, then you do really well here. And I kept like pushing, I kept snubbing because 2008 happened. You have to understand like how, you know, we've all heard the stories and you fucking in the truck and it was a train wreck for years for me. And I was like, fuck that trade. I hate tile. Like, I don't want to have anything to do with a tile ever again in my life. So wait, when you came here, you didn't come here to do tile right away? No, absolutely not. I always had believed you transferred. (laughs) Seriously. Yeah. So you did tile in California. Mm-hmm. You obviously had the skill and the, the knowledge. Mm-hmm. And you came here as a headhunter. 
I, I and did. And then yeah. ended up back in tile. Yeah, yeah. So I was out of tile for probably, I would say maybe two or three years, you know, and it was, so what was that like? That's like 2011, 2012 ish. And my wife went to me and she was like, you know, she goes, I think you really should do tile again. And I'm like, because I wasn't getting anywhere with the headhunting. Like, let's not fantasize it. Yes, I'm placing CFOs. I'm organizing jobs for people who make $400,000. I wasn't making shit. <laughs> I was barely surviving. And I was stressed. And it was I was trying to exist in this financial fucking world. Where it was like, you know, the bulls, the stock market, like all this stuff. And I was really trying to exist in that. And I was, I mean, bottom line was failing. And, and I couldn't really get, find my way. And my wife's like, you know, you, you could get into construction again. You got to go back to doing the tile work. You, you know, you love, so she bought me a dual combo kit and I still have the combo kit in the garage. And I started just getting, picking up like little jobs with people. And this was in Buffalo. So I wasn't even moved it. We were doing the immigration process. So I was sitting in Buffalo and we're doing this immigration process that took like four years. So for four years I did you know, for every 10 jobs that I got, it was like, you know, and that's a whole other thing. I had to learn Buffalo style of construction, not California style mm -hmm. or Vegas style or Reno style. I had to learn Buffalo style. So I was like a handyman basically for several years doing like little odd jobs. And they like to do the whole renovation, not just tile. So I'm, a, you know, coming to grips with what they're doing and what they're, you know, comfortable with and what they want you to do. So for every like 10 jobs I'm doing, one's a tile job, like a little tile floor. So I really couldn't get the experience I wanted I, I back into it. You know, I just was, it was never felt comfortable or in sync. So I decided when I got my immigration packet to Toronto that I'm going to work for a company. I had been in the union before back in, uh, back in uh, Vegas and in Reno. And I was like, you know, I'm going to go into the union. I don't need to get my contractors. I don't need to deal with that or taxes or any of that stuff. So um, when I moved here, I immediately went to the union hall and I'm like, you know, okay, I want to be in the union, blah, blah, blah. So, okay. So you have to go find a company to work for first. So I'm going to go to work for this company. I get this sheet. The sheet has all this. It looked like, you know, I don't know, a 14 year old, actually 14 year olds are way better now, but like maybe an eight year old put together this spreadsheet and it had dollar amounts per square foot for different tiles. And it was like a dollar thirty-five for this tile, a dollar twenty for this tile. And I'm like, uh, what's what's with this? And the guy says, so what we do is you go get your own business license. He goes, you don't have to, you don't have to. Now they didn't know I had run a business before. And he goes, just you, just put, just use your last name. He's talking to me like I'm 19 years old. I just got started, right? And the whole time I'm just listening. Mm -hmm, okay. He says, just just use your last name or just a number. Doesn't matter. You get your business license and then you bring your business license to us and this is what we'll pay you to do work and i said so if this is the case if a shower takes me like a day i'm gonna make like 85 bucks and he goes yeah that's about right but you know you get faster and you know you'll end up getting better work as you make your way through this so you know you could you could be up to like 200 a day is what he told me and i was like yeah but i've got years into you know into this business and everything so they didn't really credit you for anything and I thought okay so you know I went back to, back and forth and and I looked at the numbers and on top of that low wage I had to pay my own taxes so I said I just want a job like I just want to work for someone you know pay me 20 bucks an hour to start I'll, I'll work my way up I'll get there but I don't want to have to go through paying my own taxes that's starting a business He's like, no, no, it's not really starting a business. Yeah, it's starting a business. Mm -hmm. So we went back and forth a little bit. So I, I went home. I ended up picking up a couple jobs off Kijiji, doing some tile work and stuff. And uh, I decided, okay, well, I have to I have to open a business license. But I'm not the type of person that wants to just open a numbered company. Then it's just cheating the system is what they're doing. These companies called trade sharks is what I call them. So they come in, they get. Uh, you know, they get all these subcontractors to do work for them and then they build a client. They make like fucking 30 percent or some ridiculous amount and they don't know how to set tile. But they have these subs that don't know how to speak English or they just moved from California and don't know the, whether they want to do headhunting or not, whatever. So I ended up uh, 
saying, screw it, I'm just going to start my own business, start my own business. And I decided from that point that I was going to start a business that was a good landing spot for people like me that wanted to go to work for someone who didn't want to worry about all the taxes and all the bullshit, but who had a good place to work that weren't going to get paid peasant wages, busting their ass all day, and then be accountable on the back end for their own taxes. So basically that's why I started King Tile. And I ended up getting a partner at one point and that didn't work out. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're segregated at this point. And the whole time, you know, my whole intention with anything that I do is the number one goal. And they say this with any business is that you should have one main goal, one, one namesake that you really want to keep within that business. And it's to make sure that I have a good home for people who have good intentions, who want to get paid for what they're worth and, you know, and they don't have to, they're not forced to go start a business, to go do stuff, you know, just to fall themselves like, like in this revolving cycle of just taxes and chasing jobs one week and then the next week actually having to install yourself and, you know, going back and forth. So that's, that's pretty much what happened. And it's turned into this. So I, I'm not really sure what this is yet, but the goal still is remain the same. And, and hopefully, you know, I don't have room for 500 people. I don't want that business. I don't, I can't, I can't do that. But there's a few spots, you know, five or so for some people that, you know, want to work hard and they don't want to worry about, you know, everything under the sun after five o'clock on a Friday. All right, guys, thanks for stopping in. As always, this has been the Tile Free Podcast, and this is shit that I wish I heard when I was young. Like, subscribe, follow YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all the socials. You know where to go. DM me with any questions or subjects that you want me to talk about. I'd be more than happy to indulge you. Once again, this has been the Tile Free Podcast, and now it is time for me to get back to work.